Live soon. No problems. On my Apple screen, it's saying webinar is now streaming live on Facebook. And I'm just going to go onto my mobile phone to see whether that's the case. It yeah. is. So we are live. Yes, we are live. My... Yeah. Okay. So um, let's wait for this audience to build up. And guys and girls, as it's building up, going to make sure that Susan adjusts that volume setting to ensure that we don't have the echo. Let's get this audience to build up. Today, guys and girls, um, which I haven't been with you live for quite a few weeks now for a number of reasons. Travel have been the main reasons or the only reasons because on uh, the last two to three weeks, I've been on a flight on the Sunday night rant time. However, this is the first time we're doing a Sunday night rant using Zoom, which is something that we use consistently in the real estate gym when we're interviewing people. And what is the reason we're using Zoom tonight? Because we're streaming in a special guest that we can have a nice short conversation on the topic at hand. And the topic at hand today, guys and girls, is what do you do? What do you do when all of a sudden a major tragedy happens, suffering takes place, order becomes chaos? And why am I using this topic tonight? Because last week when I was in London, the ritual I would have is when I'd wake up in the morning, I would go to the iPad version of the Telegraph and there on the second page of the Telegraph, I saw a guy in my street who I knew, who I had coffee with a few times, who decided that on this particular day, he would go to work on a Monday morning and then leave his office on a Monday morning and then go look and take a train to another destination and then go disappearing for three days and then was found dead. And as usual in these situations, there was no, um, um, any reason to suspect that there'd been anything else but the obvious. I share this story with you because you've always known that I take the approach that behind a smiley face and behind someone that, you know, sometimes looking that life's going fantastic could be another story. I also share this story with you, guys and girls, because to me, life can be order. Order is when you go to work on a normal Monday morning and chaos is that your life ends shortly afterwards. Order to me is going to a mosque and praying at 12 o'clock on a Friday Chaos is that out of the blue, someone comes along and shoots 50 people. Order to me is being a school teacher at another school and having a phone call come to you to be told that your kid has hung themselves. Order to me is going in for a standard examination and being told by a doctor that you have a terminal illness. And I wanna let you know that because the nature of my work, which is in training and development, I'm often exposed to a lot of people that are going through um, incredible amounts of pain that have happened all of a sudden in their lives. Um, and I have to say that pain has really, you know, exasperated, I would say, in the last six to eight months in real estate, because one of the triggers, one of the triggers is, of course, um, financial pressure that can cause a lot of stress in one's life and one's family life. So that's, that's one. Also, of course, if you're an estate agent, you don't want to be spending every minute of your day having unmet expectations from your clients not being met 
and them getting frustrated. And it's very easy, particularly when you're a compassionate person without any filter to actually not feel for these people. I mean, I felt for it yesterday. I mean, there was a, there was a couple that had paid, you know, significantly uh, 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 over the odds on a property and they're trying to sell their property and it's not stacking up and, you know, there's bridging involved. And I felt their pain looking at their eyes and it's really difficult to actually separate yourself from those things. Um, but that got me thinking to myself, you know, about, and this is going to lead on to the conversation I'm going to have with our guest. That got me thinking into, you know, when bad things happen and when bad things happen caused by other people. For instance, the Christchurch um, um, terrorist or whatever term you want to give, you know, uh, um, the terrorist um, killer, um, I don't know what term I should, you know, describe that guy, but the 50 people that he killed, or Hitler for that matter, or that young kid, nine years of age, a few years ago, I remember Venables and another nine-year-old, two, no, sorry, they were 10 years of age, 10 years of age. So these two 10-year-old kids killed a two-year-old kid and took the two-year-old kid after they murdered it and laid it on a railway track. And that got me thinking, are people born evil or do they become evil? And on the surface, you would turn around and you'd always say, no, um, people start good and become bad. And the research is ambiguous, to be quite honest with you. And I'm going to get Susan to actually put a, a video link on the comment section because there is evidence to suggest that MRI scans of, um, you know, crazy serial killers um, do have some patterns in them that can look different to the patterns of um, normal society. But it is unclear. It is unclear. But what is clear is that no matter where you are with your genetics in life, the one thing that we know whether you've got a predisposition to depression, whether you've got a predisposition to one illness over another, what we clearly know is as human beings, we are given the ability to make choices and choices that allow you to improve what your baseline situation is. So hypothetically speaking, you do not turn around. You do not turn around and say that a... A, uh, a person that may have had the MRI scans that mirrored that of other people that were serial killers becomes a serial killer. You don't say that. Or you don't turn around and say someone that's got, you know, um, depression that's been running genetically in their family or any other condition for that matter. What you do say is, here are the cards I've been dealt. What am I going to do about it? And that's a very powerful thing. Because as human beings, we're different to other species, different to, you know, dogs and other animals. We can make choices. We have got the ability to make choices and change the direction of our life. You know, you don't have to sign in and sign into any, um, you know, like diagnosis, you know, and you, you, most of you would know that uh, in my 30s, I got diagnosed with with an illness which I simply haven't chose to participate, even though it's had a big part in my life over the last 13, 14 years on a number of occasions. Um, but today, I'm going to bring in a guy that I, um, I, highly, I highly rate. And the reason I highly rate him is that he's different to most real estate people I speak to. I mean, for a start, he didn't start off, you know, he started off someone studying political science and, and studying um, education at university, you know, left, um, left uh, um, 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 the city of Sydney, having a very successful um, career in business and decided that he didn't want to actually uh, play that game and moved to um, Byron Bay. And he now runs one of the you know, greatest real estate businesses in the country. But today's not going to be talking about real estate. Today's going to be talking about you know, um, adversity, talking about what he sees you know, 
uh, are the successful qualities of, of people that are able to survive, you know, tragic things that happen in their lives. And um, in addition to that, we're going to talk about um, a special event, which I hardly ever do. And I'm going to talk about that. So, Susan, if we can bring in um, Chris Hanley. Um, and Chris is in his uh, home in Byron Bay with that beautiful bookcase behind him. Um, <laughs> And his uh, very intelligent glasses, Chris. <laughs> Chris, this, How are this you, Tom? <laughs> good. This this feels very weird today because normally I'm on Facebook, right, and I'm seeing I'm seeing people, but I'm not seeing anyone here. So I'm really glad that uh, that you're now on. So, Chris, firstly, um, because there's a lot of people that watch this. They watch a lot of people watch it live now, and a lot of people watch it like yourself, watch it on a Monday morning. Mm -hmm. um, now you're in right now. You're in Byron Bay, right? Mm -hmm. when, yep. when, when, when did you first move to Byron Bay? Uh, more than thirty years ago, Tom. Thirty-two, thirty-three years ago, I came here. About half my life ago. <laughs> you love it there, don't you? Yeah, I do. I was just saying to Susan before we came on. I spent I spent the weekend in a kayak. I, I spent yesterday morning uh, surrounded by dolphins. Uh, I, I've dived with a mate of mine. Uh, today I spent up the Brunswick River in a kayak with, with some other friends. It's, there's a lot to love up here, Tom. It's a very, very beautiful part of the world. So, um, Chris, Byron, Byron Bay, in, in the time, like in that 30 years, so you, Byron Bay's got a special spot in my heart because, Chris, Byron Bay, the first holiday I ever had with my brother was in Byron Bay. And I stayed at the um, Lord Byron Resort on Johnson Road. That that's yep. still there. Is it is it still the same hotel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I sold that uh, many, uh, a bunch of years ago, and it is. It's it's been renovated and restored. But yeah, it's still there. It's right next to, or just down the road now from the. They've just built a new shopping centre and a, a big cinema here, which we're all happy about. But yeah, it's still there. It's lots of people's first place they stay in Byron. It's relatively affordable and, and you can walk everywhere. It's still there. Yep. Okay. Now, um, Chris, the thing, we, we, share, we, we share similar views on some topics and particularly the topics of things that piss us off about real estate agents and things that we like about real estate agents, things we like about the job, things that sometimes we get, we get pissed off. Like if you were, I mean, there's, no, there's been no questions given to you before. So I'll let you think through some of these things that I'll ask you. What are, what are Chris, what are some of the things that, you know, you think to yourself, it annoys you about real estate agents? I think there's a lot of really good people, Tom, who are real estate agents who've been led to believe over their years in the industry that there's only one way to practice being a real estate agent. And it's not their fault. So one of the things that, that I find frustrating is that that one method of operating uh, isn't the only method of operating. So I find that frustrating. I think the second thing is that people don't trust the public enough i think the public are very happy to receive good communication direct communication the truth from agents but i think a lot of times through our own fear and i've had it too we don't communicate as clearly there's a great line in in true grit the the movie uh, where the young woman in there is is accused is that, so, 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 of Chris, is that is that also a movie now i knew it was a book there was a book called yeah. True Grid. And there's two versions, Tom. Two right. movies. The original John Wayne movie. Yeah. And then the one with Jeff Bridges that was made a few years ago. And there's a line in there where Rooster Cogburn says to the young lady there, you don't varnish your words, do you? And, and I think that's a great line. You know, we, 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 we varnish things. We don't tell people the direct truth. And the third thing I think that I get frustrated with, and this is on behalf of all of us within the industry, I think that the good people within our industry don't always get the accolades or, or the light. They don't come out of the dark. They're in the corner doing their things. And you and I are going to talk later about an event that, that I'm involved in. That's an, very much an effort to highlight 
and show how the good people can flourish and they do flourish in our, in our industry. Look, I'm going to, Chris, I'm going to move straight into this because I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. I, I can tell you that I would get, in every week, I would get five to 10 approaches by CRM system companies, by various data people, by every person, because they know that over the last 15 years, I've been jabbing away, built this audience that doesn't get sold. And I never product push. And all I do is have this honest, real conversation. Sometimes, it, you know, I get people turned off because I occasionally swear, but I've, you know, I've tried to, to tame that down. Um, um, not that I actually think swearing makes one person worse than another, but I know that for some people, um, when they hear it, um, they, you know, had an upbringing that whatever it is, they just tune out. But what I want to talk about, Chris, is you said to me um, um, about three weeks ago, you said to me, Tom, the, the amount of pain that's happening in Christchurch, real estate agents should do something about it. And you came up with this, you know, it was uh, uh, a big plan in your head that will hold this event. And then you went off, spent a few days trying to put together, got a little bit disheartened and then came back to me afterwards and I couldn't believe the quality of people that you got that, and this is, I want you to confirm this, you, I, 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 I want, you've confirmed it to me, but I want the whole audience to know, these people, not only aren't they charging, they're paying for their own airfares to go to Christchurch themselves, they're paying for their accommodation to go to Christchurch. They're not expecting any branding sort of, you know, pizzazz to come out of it. They are people that have got one thing that me and you totally adore, and that is intent, good intent. The, 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 the intent of actually doing something because they care about people that have suffered. So, Chris, when is, when is the actual event? It's called Rise. Uh, it's on the 2nd of May, Thursday, the 2nd of May. It's only three and a half weeks away now. Um, the lineup's fantastic. Give me, and... give me some of the names because I want to recognise, because you know what pisses me off? So many times I, you know, I see people wanting to go off to do seminars and they're always looking, what's in it for me? What's the profit and loss look like here? What's it going to do for me? How will it enhance my career? What am I going to make out of it? These people here, it was you picking up the phone. It was generally you picking up the phone, wasn't it? Yes. Bringing them up, saying, mate, this is what we want to do. There's a bit of pain in Christchurch. We want to help the victims of um, the, the, the family victims come up with a bit of money. So we want to try and raise some money, plus physically be there physically be there, which adds an, uh, another element. It's better than just writing a check. Um, who are some of the names of the people? I'll move around the country, but the first person I text was Phil Harris, who's a mate. Yes. Um, and he's a sidekick, Tom Hector. Yes. Both of them said yes pretty well straight away. by te they, I, I, they said yes by text. Yeah. They didn't ask any questions. They just said yes. I moved around into Melbourne then, and I went to Jealous Craig. I know Nick Dowling. And Andrew McCann from Jealous Craig. Yep. Yes, from both of them. Uh, Nick West is an, an old mate from great company, Nelson Alexander. Nick yep. couldn't do enough and said yes. Um, then I went up to Sydney and, and, and uh, I, I got a lot of good help there. John Cunningham's been a great help. Craig Ponty uh, and uh, uh, Gavin Rubenstein. Um, they all said yes and they're, and they're all coming across. Then I went to some of the other companies. Uh, Georgie Bates from John Cunningham's office said yes. Uh, Julie Hatcher, a wonderful uh, agent who maybe a lot of people don't know, but it's from Cobden and Hayson, uh, and said yes. Um, Dane Atherton, um, who I'll come back to in a minute, but Dane was there from the first weekend and said yes. Megan Jaffe um, and her wonderful team uh, across the ditch who've been not just involved uh, to a small degree, they've been involved a great. They've helped organise this because they're um, they're in Auckland, New, they're in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the the team that put this together is nine of us, but there's 
Dane's on the Gold Coast. The wonderful Sarah Bell and Josh Cobb are up in Brisbane, a young couple um, there who work in separate businesses. But we built a website in 11 days. Uh, it's a, what's, the, what's, what's the web address? Susan, can you put it down in the comments? What's the web address? It's Rise 2019. And, and <laughs> I'm not sure how to find it, but Susan will find Susan, it by the end of the Susan program. Guys, and by the way, this is the first time you're actually seeing me go off sort of doing a bit of selling on, on, on a Sunday night rant. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is not, oh, we're going to raise money. These people are actually saying we're not going to cost anything to make money out of this to help these victims of... Um, and just imagine, I'm, I'm fine, just fucking think about it. You go off, I'm picturing myself, I'm not a Muslim, I'm a Christian, but, and I don't go to church often, but I'm just picturing myself Going to church this morning, which I didn't go, but I'm picturing myself, Chris, going to church this morning, walking in, sitting down, being in that meditative state, contemplating, being grateful, and then some person comes in with a helmet on and a GoPro that is live streaming, live streaming. That's why I wanted to talk about this topic, Chris. Live streaming on Facebook and YouTube, and I have seen... I shouldn't have watched it, but a guy at a cafe showed it to me on WhatsApp and I saw it. And it's quite distressing watching it. Like it's, 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 it's more, you, you couldn't have a, you couldn't write a movie to look as impactive as this. And these people, 50 people get, get shot. So that to me, that to me, that, that's what this is. That's what this is all about. Um, so Susan, please put that URL there. Chris, the tickets are around 250 bucks, aren't they? A little less, Tom. They're two twenty-five, but we're doing a number of different things here. You can buy a ticket, and the airfares into Christchurch at the moment are unbelievably low. And I'm guessing in order to encourage people to visit the city, um, you can also donate. And there's a big donate button on the website. But more importantly, if you donate, we're going to live stream this. We don't think that's been done before, but we're going to live stream the event so people can watch it in New Zealand or in, in different parts of Australia. Um, I just want to go back though, Tom, to talk about how it happened. Basically 10 people through text messages and a couple of phone calls got together and did all of the organizing in a compressed two week period. Um, we built websites, um, we did the programming, we found the venue, we did all of these things. And I want to give particular praise here to Megan Jaffe's team, um, to Mark Kovic, um, to Olivia um, and to Theo. There were young people over there who outside their normal work hours helped this put together. And I want to talk um, uh, about a young man in Christchurch called Nathan Najib. Nathan's only about 30 years of age and you probably know Nathan. He's, but a, he's Off the top of my head, he's a gym member and a, and a very active one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah, he's a really, really lovely young man. The reason this is happening is not because of my social media connection to that young man. It's because the day after the violence in Christchurch, I text him because I knew he was in Christchurch to see whether he was okay. From that text and a couple of other texts and some phone conversations, I went around to some of the other people and Phil and Tom know him. And then I found out, most of the people involved in this um, collaboration know this guy, this one young man who's uh, Afghani. His family are from Afghanistan. And, and his story in the last few weeks, including him going to funerals, while we've been talking with him about organising this, has made it more powerful and more relevant. So you mentioned another thing that's really important. It's, it's about raising money for the families. It's, it, but it's it's also about going over and, and just spending a bit of time with the Kiwis over there. I didn't even mention all the speakers. There's more speakers. Mark McLeod's part of this program and has been very generous. And you, and you know, and, and you know, Chris. So, so because I know that some people are going to be putting on their why aren't you going, Chris? I you you know very well when you spoke to me. I said if I could get there, I am overseas and I can't pull out of that thing that I'm overseas. No, no, no. But let let, let me cut in here. Not only do I know that, and you're one of a couple of other people, you were the first people I went to, and you've given so much help behind the scenes on top of it all, including background and so on. And no, I so know that. 
Um, you know, there were, and there were some other people who I know who are really good people in the industry. They just couldn't make the date, but they're donating or they're sending members of their team. But There's Peter always... Fitzsimons, you didn't yeah. mention Peter. No, I didn't yet. I'll get is, to Peter. Is, is he speaking? Yeah, Peter Fitzsimons is speaking there. He is. And, and uh, we've got a new addition to the speakers list. We're just formalising someone very significant in Christchurch who's been involved in many of the ceremonies and so on there in the last couple of weeks, a very significant person in the, in the Islamic community there. We've got a speakers list that's so long. Uh, there's panels and interviews and all sorts of things. And I think people for their $225 will get great value. But there's another thing. We're, we're not going to do normal presentations at this event. In essence, what we're going to try and do is talk about the hard things, the challenges in different people's careers and in their, in their lives, both inside and outside their profession. So rather than talk about what they're doing today, the million dollar earners or CEOs of big businesses, all the speakers are being asked to talk about the tough stuff, Tom, they've done along the way. We just tend to think for this event, that'll be more appropriate than maybe focusing on some of the other things. Okay. Now, can I ask you, the other thing, Chris, that I was just thinking about it, the, you know what one of the real valuable things is? You know, the, on August 13, when, when my brother passed away, in Greek tradition, the minute that someone passes away, the word gets around to all the family and friends. And then what happens is everyone comes to the house. Mm -hmm. So what happens is I had never seen my family's, my parents' home, my family home, have so many people ever in my whole life. There was just people. And all they would do is just sit there, just sit there with my mum and my dad, right? Just sit there. And other people would, you know, you know, give some catering, make a coffee, this and that. But I can't tell you, Chris, there is something healing mm. about having someone there. Because I think to myself, what would it have been like that night had me, my mum and my dad left palliative care and went to the home by ourselves. There's mm. something I can't, like, you couldn't, I, I, you can't put a price on it because it's like someone else is taking some of the pain with you. Tom, right? human connection today, in spite of the fact that we were sold social media as a way to connect, human disconnection is the, is producing the biggest epidemic of loneliness and disconnection in the history of mankind. The whole thing about us going over there to the, is, is partly to be with the people over there. Like, I don't know how everyone else was affected on the Friday and the Saturday and the Sunday after that event. I was deeply affected and everyone I've spoken to is the same way. So you're right. Being alone is not the place to be. So we figured we'd just go over there. But like all ideas, when you start it, you're not actually sure it's going to happen because what happens is all these things pop up, challenges along the way. And it's like all good ideas. You know, you're never sure they're going to happen, but this one's really good because it got stronger and better as we went along, but particularly because everyone collaborated. And you mentioned it before. There's no agenda here. There's, no one's getting paid. We're just going over there to hang out with the Kiwis try and raise some money and we'll live stream and other people can join it as well. It's, it's that simple. Beautiful. No clickbaiting, no product selling, no branding, a bunch of people that are taking out. It's two days. New Zealand is a two day trip. That's the way it works because of the time differences. Um, so Chris, we're going to have all the links below in the comments. And when this email goes out, I'm going to make sure that we've got the links because my contribution to this is to try and, help get some exposure to the real estate community, both in Australia and New Zealand. Can I ask you, Chris, you know, like two questions I want to put to you. The first one, you know, when, when, when shit, when, because you, you're going to talk about it at the conference, but I'd like to get a bit of a glimpse of your view on it. When shit things happen in your life, when you're dealt with shit cards in business or in life, as the owner of the number one first national office in Australia for, um, for the whole company for the last couple of years, 
you've had a good helicopter view and you go out there, you talk at a lot of offices, you do your office audits, you speak on leadership. You've had a very good helicopter view of people that succeed long-term sustainability. What is it, Chris? What, what is it? What are, what are the people, what, what, what qualities do you see the people that, you know, um, are able to get through punches in the face? This, the Finns have a word called SISU, S-I-S-U. It's not doesn't exactly have an English translation, but it's resilience, grit. Um, they just, this quality in people. So whether you're a salesperson or a boss, it's this, the, the answer is the same. You meet these people and they just don't give up. So the first quality, when I see people that have, horrendous things in their life, whether they're business or personal, is they don't give up. And that doesn't mean they don't want to give up. Sometimes it doesn't mean they spit the dummy. It doesn't mean sometimes they have a little break or whatever. But in the end of the day, they just don't stop. Are, so they, they, are, keep... they, is that, are they born like that, Chris? Yeah, we're going to nurt, nurture or nature. We have, I know what the evidence is, and you alluded to it at the start. The evidence is unclear. Some people argue passionately that people are just born that way. Other people argue that, that you can, circumstances can lead you to become that way. Personally, for me, I actually think people are born with it. That I, I, I've always believed it, but I'm open to have my view changed. But all the evidence I've seen over the years seems to be, it's like a genetic roll of the dice. And, and these people, you see them in circumstances I'm a great student of history. And I think, did you go and visit that Churchill Museum I, I told you did. about? And it was, one of, it was one, of, one of the highlights. I spent, uh, I was going to spend an hour there. I spent three and a half hours there. I mean, mm. you actually felt that you could have been having dinner with a guy. I you mean, that's, you know, yeah. that's how, how real it was. And you were right. His cigars were there. And, yeah. uh, and I had no idea that amongst it all, everything that that guy did, that he suffered from depression. He had, he had the black dog. He was also an alcoholic. Um, we're talking about Winston Churchill. And the, 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 when Tom was in London recently, I said, just go and visit his bunker. Now, the reason I bring Churchill up is that with all of those challenges that he had in his life, he was still, in my view, probably the main reason that the world exists as it does today. Because without his leadership, the world would have been a completely different place. So I'm a student of history. And, and whether it's nurture or nature, all I know in answer to your question is that resilience, grit, or as the Finns call it, sisu, seems to be the most important. The second quality is people who, who overcome stuff remain calm at their core. They, they might be going crazy on the outside or running around a million miles an hour or giving off all this energy, but inside they're calm. They've got this inner calmness now whether it's come from meditation whether it's come from just being born that way all of those things and i think the third thing in, this is my observation of people being, who've been some hard through really really hard things and popped out the end is they seem to be able to to still along that journey find good things in in tough stuff you know that they have the ability to to look at some of the things and even have a laugh about them. So they seem to be the three factors for me. There's lots of others, but they're the three main ones for me. Okay, Chris, um, we've been going, um, we've been going for around half an hour. Um, um, if I asked you one more question, and that is um, at the moment, if you, if you were to put a crystal ball um, and look three to five years ahead, what would life as a real estate agent look like in three to five years compared to what it looks like today? Would it, would it, would it be much different or would it, would it be pretty similar? I don't think it's going to be that much different, Tom. And you've got to remember, I'm, I'm in my fourth decade of watching this. I think what happens with many of the, technology assets that we now have, we get a little glued sometimes into believing that 
old school things like being really good at communicating and being good at what you're at, asking questions, being curious, human connection. I think we've been led to believe in the last few years that some of that stuff's not going to be as important. I would argue the next few years it's going to be a lot more important. And you talked earlier about the salespeople in particular who are feeling some pain out there in the real estate market because the, mark, the winds have changed, okay? Well, I, I get that, but that's where your learning comes from. Like, I think what's happened, a lot of people are stunned, and if they've only been in the industry for four or five years, the great lesson I learned through so many of these turbulent periods is that's where all your learning comes from. Everyone at the moment's punch drunk and a bit startled because it's pretty tough out there. Don't get me wrong, I get it. We had four of the hardest years we ever had in the last GFC. But I think this is, this is where you grow. Like this, is, this is a gift. This is a time when I've watched in our office, our office, the staff in our office, the ones that were around you in the GFC, they're killing it. They're doing really, really well, working really hard. But So I don't think four or five years, I think there's going to be less agents. I think there's 105,000 of us roughly now. I think there'll be less agents in four or five years. I think a lot of the little offices might struggle a little bit because I think you're going to need to have much bigger teams and economies of scale and you're going to need to have marketing departments and graphic designers and all of those things to keep up. But I don't think what we're going to be doing, Tom, which is matching up buyers and sellers and listing property and educating owners is going to be any different because you need special skills to be able to do that and we can't do it ourselves as sellers. So I think we'll still exist. Robots won't take our job. And you and I might still be talking to each other four or five years from now. I hope so, Chris. <laughs> I, always have, I always have very good uh, text and phone conversations with you. Um, mate, I want to, uh, I want to you know, congratulate you for not just thinking of it, because I actually think a lot of people do think of things, but somewhere along the line, thinking and sometimes I'll even take the first action, but, you know, you get sort of a bit of pushback and you think, fuck, you know, it's all too hard. I'll just do my own thing, right? Like you felt strong about it. You know, you took first action, second action, third action. It's now happening. Can I repeat again? It is May the 2nd. 2nd, yep, uh, it's, May the 2nd. It's, it's, it's May the 2nd. Um, and if you're a New Zealand agent, mate, those, those New Zealand airline flights are flying there. They're like trains and buses. They're constantly there. Wherever you are in New Zealand, go to Christchurch to that venue. Um, and if not, if you're in Australia, actually, if you're in Australia, you know what? I've got to tell you, I was in Christchurch like a week before um, um, that sad, you know, Black Friday. I have to say to you, it is a bloody great place. It is, it is a mm. fan Christchurch is a fantastic place. So if you want to go off and take a couple of days, off the top of my head, I reckon Christchurch flights return, 400 bucks. Tops. Know? They're less. Tops. Less? Okay. Yep, they're less. And okay. the really interesting thing that you brought up, there's a lot of Australians, they're coming. There's all these people have texted in the last 10 days saying, we're booked. They're coming over there. They want, they want to be part of this. I've got to tell you, I've been involved in a lot of events over the years, a lot of different ones. There's never been anything. The feeling around this is, is, is fantastic because it's a collaboration. And, and I want to give particular note here, Tom, to all of the young, nearly all young people who've helped us make this. It's been a collaboration. It hasn't just been me. It's been Dane and Sarah and Josh and Olivia and Mark and well, Theo and well, Megan. Amazing people. I know them all. I know, I, I know every person you've mentioned there one thing I've noticed that they're all good people. Guys and girls, I want to make it very clear. Um, this year has been brought today. There is no financial interest, no commercial gain. I have nothing to gain. I'm bringing exposure to something. One of my goals in life, I'm 51. Hopefully, I live to 80, 90. I haven't had a fucking great track record. But, you know, at, 50, at 51, one of the things in my life, I want to help ease suffering. This is the least I can do is to try and amplify this message out there to as many people as possible. So Chris Hanley, thank you so much. We'll make sure that we get this uh, sent out. And um, yeah, lucky you. You waking up tomorrow at Byron Bay. I'm waking up in Haberfield. Tom, you're a good man. Thank you for, thank you for helping us. And everybody out there, we'd love to see you in Christchurch. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Susan. Right. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye, man. Bye.